Well, good morning. My name is John, and welcome to week number seven of uh, CCA uh, at Summer or Summer at CCA. Uh, I'm so glad that you're joining us. Uh, so, about a year ago, I started to work with a running coach. I'd been running uh, for the last little bit, and uh, through some friends, I got introduced to a local coach who would each week would send me a plan of what I could run and we could gather at the track and he would actually tell us what to do. And I, I think about this a lot and at some point the metaphor will definitely break down, but I think there's so many parallels to a, a running coach and our relationship with God. Because I, I have a goal of what I'm trying to do with my running. I'm trying to get faster, I want to get stronger, I, I want to stay healthier. And I could very much try to do that on my own and there's times in my life where I've done that but if I take the time and build in different rhythms in my life where I not only get advice from a coach but where I actually listen and take the advice and actually apply it to my life then that's where I start to see a real real difference and that's what uh, we're trying to do this summer is we're trying to build some rhythms into our life where we can take time to not only just learn new things, but we can actually apply them to our life. We wanna become a group of people who better love Jesus, love each other, and love the world. Uh, and in particularly this summer, we wanna get better at prayer, at connection, and fun. And we do that when we ingrain ourselves into these rhythms and these habits, when we take the time to listen to what God is telling us, what our coach is telling us. Uh, so if you are watching the video this morning, then you're already on that journey. You are listening to something that I think that God wants to tell you today. Uh, but this video, just watching, is just the start. Just like when I get my plan of here's what I'm supposed to do from my coach each week, that, that's helpful. But it's when I actually go out and do it. Uh, so uh, in our Next Step email, uh, on the link on the bottom of the YouTube, you'll find some questions that we really want you to take some time to think through. And you can do that in lots of different ways. You can do that with someone in your family. You can do that with a friend. Uh, we talk about one-on-one -on -one relationships if you're in one of those. Uh, and a lot of you this summer are in these uh, watch parties. And so that's a great place to spend some time discussing uh, how does what you learned today affected you? Well, what did you think? What did you like? What did you not like? And then there's some practices to actually take some time to listen and to pray and to actually live this out this week. And so I encourage you to do that. Uh, another rhythm that we talk about a lot about just how we're trying to live this way is that we want to become generous people, which uh, I think all of us want to be generous, but sometimes we're just, we lean more than we want to towards selfishness. So we have to be intentional about being generous people. So we want to be generous, especially in three different ways. We want to give to causes that really matter. And so I hope you find something that's making a big difference in the world and give to that in a generous way. Uh, we hope that you give towards hospitality, uh, just friends, family, neighbors, find ways that you can just really spread joy and hospitality uh, using your resources. Uh, and to support what we're doing here at Christ Church Albany, building staff, bounce houses, speakers, all that stuff is paid for by donations through uh, folks like you. So we really appreciate that and you can give at the link there. Uh, but as we get started today, uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, praying because I, I get it. There's all these things that we are learning and things that we want to do, uh, maybe we feel like we ought to do, and we want them not just to become like, you know, just oughts, we want them to be things that we just desire, things that just are just true of who we are, that they just become natural for us. And so let me take some time to pray as we learn today uh, about the heart of prayer where we just really listen to what God is telling us to do and then to obey what God is telling us to do. So let me spend some time praying that we can really dive into that. Uh, Jesus, thank you that you speak to us, that you give us regiments, that you give us exercises, that you give us plans of how we can take next steps in these relationships with you and we want a relationship with you a relationship with other people we want deep friendships and to make an impact in the world with whatever you're telling us today help us to make better ways in our life to listen to what you're telling us to do and then to actually live it out in this name we pray amen 
love you guys. Uh, have a great week and enjoy this week on prayer. So Pete, here we are, session number seven. Seven. The penultimate session of the prayer Indeed, course. Yes. So, so far we've talked a lot about how we can kind of talk to God. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked a lot about how God can speak to us. Right. And I know as soon as we mention that, um, there are gonna be people that are watching that are gonna think that's kind of either weird or scary. Okay, yeah. Well, the Bible says that we are actually designed as human beings to walk and talk with God. So this is, the most natural thing in the world, to speak to him and to hear him speak to us. So it's normal to hear God's voice. It's abnormal and probably a little bit dangerous to be spiritually deaf. Mm. So if you take some of the greatest people who ever lived, take Moses. Exodus 33 verse 11 says, the Lord would speak with Moses. It's one of the loveliest verses in the Bible. Face to face as one speaks with a friend. Yeah. So it was, um, it was a friendship conversation between Moses and God. Jesus says, man, woman shall not live by bread alone, but by every single word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Mm. So that's why this line of the Lord's Prayer, asking for daily bread, is about listening to God, as well as asking for physical food. If we're not listening to what God's saying to us, we'll kind of starve spiritually. Right. John 10, 27, so I'm rolling out the Bible verses here, but <laughs> Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. So one of the marks of real Christians is that we recognize Jesus' voice. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a little bit like, um, we've got this lovely old fashioned phone here. Um, and if you called me, actually, you're not gonna use this. Let me get my cell phone out. <laughs> If you called me on my phone, when we first met, I didn't have your number in my phone. And I would be like, who is this? And you'd have to say, hi, it's Poppy and Poppy. all that. Whereas now I've got your number in my phone. It comes up, it says Poppy. And so as you build relationship with God, you, you get to recognize his, you know it's him calling, right? You get to, to know his voice, just like those sheep recognizing the shepherd's voice. Mm. Aren't there just some people, though, that are better at hearing God's voice than others? Like, I've been a Christian for a lot of years, but there are still times when I find myself even struggling to figure out if I'm hearing the voice of God. I think that's true. I think there are just definitely some people who are just amazing at hearing the voice of, uh, of God. And the truth is that God speaks to us all differently. He's made us all different, so we tend to hear him differently. Some it's really mystical, it's dreams and visions and angels and all of that. Some, like God leads us and speaks to us just really practical ways. And it's okay to hear God the way that he's made you. Don't compare yourself too mm. much to other people. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really good. I see this, we've, we, as you know, we've got two kids and, and um, it, it's amazing how different they are actually. And they definitely hear God differently. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the biggest decisions we had to make as a family when they were growing up was we, we knew it was time to move. We'd been living in America for a while, but we weren't sure where. So we'd drawn up this short list of, of options. And I talked to a, a guy who's a, like a spiritual director to me. And I said to him, um, any advice? He says, it's really important you pray as a whole family. Mm. about this decision that it's not just you and Sammy off like hearing God and then you just tell the kids because yeah. they need to be part of the process. But it felt weird because our, our, our boys were about seven and five or something like that at that time. So they were quite little to be like praying into this big decision. Anyway, every night at bedtime we prayed about it. And then one day Sammy was walking the kids home from their like primary elementary school and Hudson suddenly goes, Mum, I'm hearing a voice in my head. And she, being the great spiritual giant that she is, didn't think it was God or anything like that. She's like, don't listen to it. Like, <laughs> you, you, you're cracking up. And then he said, but it's a nice voice. She said, those are the worst kinds. He said, I think it might be God. And then she went, oh, yeah, uh, this is in the Bible. Yeah. 
So she said, well, what's the voice saying? And he said, the voice is saying we're supposed to move to Guildford, which mm. was, is where we now live. And it was, it was actually near the bottom of our list at that time. So I phoned my spiritual director and I said, what do you do with a seven-year-old hearing the audible voice of God? Right. And he said, well, you're nuts if you don't take that seriously, but you're nuts if you relocate your whole life on the basis of a seven-year-old hearing a voice. So I said, thanks for nothing and put the phone down. <laughs> So then we went out for like a Chinese meal, I think it was, uh, with the whole family. And we turned to Danny. Remember, he's five. He's like on one of those booster seats. <laughs> and it, back then his hair was white and like electrostatically charged. And um, we said, now, Danny, you know, H Hudson feels like he's heard from God that we're supposed to move to Guildford. What are you sensing? And he looked around and realized like, for once in my life, the whole family is hanging on my words. And he, he took his time. And he kind of put his little podgy hands together. <laughs> and eventually we had to remind him he was meant to be speaking. And he said, I sense that God is saying, if we move to Guildford, can we have a dog, please? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how Noodle came into our life. That's one of the reasons we now live in Guildford. And so, you know, Huddy's hearing God more mystically, mm. audible voice. Danny, it's more, um, but it's very practical. Yes. I'd like, basically, I'd like a dog and I'm going to pretend it's God. And I think, I think some of us, it's like we hear God on, we're on Wi-Fi. It's like you're just picking up God's broadcast all the time. Some it's a bit more like a cell phone. It's like he's got your number and he calls regularly. And some of us, if we're honest, we go through seasons, it's a bit like snail mail. Mm. You know, you get the occasional thing through the door when it's really urgent, but you might not hear from God as often as you like. Yeah. And I do think it's different for different people. And, and one of my favorite um, Bible stories talks specifically about this and how to hear God and how it's different for different people. And this, this is, I, I like us to read the story if that's right. Okay. This is 1 Samuel chapter three. And we're going to read a fair bit, but it's such a great story, I don't think anyone will mind. Uh, starting to read at verse 1. It's the story of Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. And in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Remember that. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place, and the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Pretty cool. He slept by the ark of the covenant. Right. Indiana Jones, eat your heart out. <laughs> and then the Lord called to Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli, said, Here I am, you called me. And Eli said, no, didn't call you. Go back, lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. And my son, Eli said, I did not call. And I don't think this is my son. I think it's my son, I did not call you. <laughs> uh, go back and lie down. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up, he went to Eli again, and he said, here I am, you called me. And then Eli realized, Dunno, the Lord was calling the boy. Mm. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And then the Lord came and stood there, calling us at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Mm. Great story, isn't so it? So good. I love it. There's so much in there. But one of the things I find so encouraging is that God kept speaking. Yeah. Samuel got it wrong, but God didn't give up, you know? And that, I don't know, that just encourages me because I often get it, it wrong. But also, notice the fact that God sounded like the old man in the next room. If God sounded all weird and boomy voice, then Samuel would have known it was God. But it sounded like another human being. Yeah. And, and, and often I think that that's the way God comes to us and speaks to us in normal ways, not weird ways. Didn't someone say that God comes to us disguised as our life? Right. I always think it's weird how weird we get about God when, if you think about it, by definition, if he created everything, then he defines normality, right? right? And he made the stuff we consider normal. 
And so why would we relegate God to religious stuff or, or, or weird stuff when by definition he is the definition of normality? Mm. And so I think if we've got ears to hear, you know, we can hear God speaking through the lyrics of a song on the radio or, or, or um, maybe even through someone who doesn't even know, know him. I just find it so encouraging in this story that Samuel gets it wrong and keeps getting it wrong. Eli keeps getting it wrong, but God doesn't give up. Yeah. Hearing God isn't always easy. Right. And actually, when we start trying to hear him just in normality, then it can get confusing. He keeps calling. He keeps speaking. And eventually... Samuel gets it right. And man, I know that I often mishear God or I ignore God. I'm so grateful that he's more patient than me. Mm. So how do we get better at this? How do we move from snail mail to cell phones? Isn't it interesting that Eli is actually the guy who eventually cottons on and introduces Samuel to the voice of God? He, he says, oh, this might be God speaking. And he coaches Samuel into that. So it's important to spend time around people who are good at hearing God and learning from them. I'm always doing that. I, I, when people say to me, oh, I've heard this or that from God, I always go, how do you know it was God? Or what, what was it like? And sometimes I seek out older Christians and, and I learn from their own experience of discerning the, the, the voice and the will of God. Okay, okay. So I've got a little bit of an idea yes. here in my head. I've got a question for okay. you, Okay. Um, how do I get better at hearing I God's voice? I knew you were going <laughs> to ask that question, yeah. Okay, two simple keys. These are really simple. The first one is this, slow down. Mm -hmm. God's not in a hurry. And the Bible says, as we've, we've thought about this before, be still and know that I am God. So it's important we build time for quiet and reflection, retreat, contemplation into our daily lives, our weekly rhythms, even our annual rhythms, because those are, those are times when the lake can become still and we can hear God's still small voice a bit better. So you're talking about some sort of like daily quiet time. Yeah, definitely. A, a time each day to be still, to read the Bible, to pray, to listen for the whisper of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I find that when I do that, it's not just that often God does speak to me as I read my Bible or as I'm just still and try to listen, but it primes me to be more attentive to the whispers of the Holy Spirit through, through the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing, just try and slow down. Um, one journalist said, atheism is the religion of the busy, you know? Mm. But then the second thing is this, as well as slowing down, soften up. And what I mean by that is it's so easy, in my own life, I know it's easy for my heart to get pretty hard. I get full of myself, overconfident, over busy, sin creeps in, all kinds of stuff. And it just makes me kind of resistant, actually, to, to tuning in yeah. to Radio Jesus, you know. <laughs> Jesus says, um, do you have ears to hear what I'm saying? Mm. Again and again, like in, in the Gospels, which means it was possible to have Jesus Christ himself walk into your town and you missed it because you didn't have ears to hear. You were too busy, like, ordering fish or, I don't know, whatever. And you missed Jesus. So sometimes I think God is speaking, but we kind of miss it because our hearts actually have got a little bit hard. So we've kind of said so far that everybody can really get better yeah. at recognizing God's voice and that we need to slow down. Yeah. We need to soften up. But some people have done, like, crazy, terrible things. Yeah and said that God was speaking to them. How do we discern whether or not it's God's voice that we're hearing or not? Great question. I apply what I call the ABC principle. A is advice. Get advice from a wise, sane Christian. B is the Bible. Is this word that I think I'm hearing in line with what the Bible says about the character of Jesus and the purpose of God? And then the C is common sense. I honestly think the number one gift that God wants to give to most Christians is common sense. Just sometimes we do such crazy things. Yeah. I've got some great friends, Dave and Molly. They have an amazing marriage, uh, lovely kids. And Dave once told me, um, he and Molly got together. They were, they were um, childhood sweethearts. You know, they, they got together at, at, at school. And they just always got on well, loved each other, attracted to each other, 
you know, they both love the Lord. And so eventually Dave proposed to Molly and she said, yes, they're engaged. And then some super spiritual Christian said, oh, but have you had a word from God that you're supposed to marry? And Dave went into this whole soul searching. Oh, no, I haven't had like some big revelation. I just really like her. We get on really well. Everyone who knows us thinks we're great together. Yeah. So, and he needed someone to sit down and go, Dave, it's OK. Like God's led you through just the common sense of you guys have a great uh, relationship. So tell us, how does that play out in your life? How do you hear God speak to you? Honestly, the most frequent way that God speaks to me is through the Bible, because it is God's utterly reliable word to us. The Apostle Paul tells Timothy, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. But we have to learn uh, to listen to the Bible for revelation, not just for education. We can use the Bible as a conversation starter. One of the best tools for doing this is the Lexio Divina, mm, yeah. which literally just means the holy reading. Are you familiar with that? Yes. So this approach to prayerful meditation on the Bible was first popularized by a Carthusian monk in the 12th century using four Latin words. But I'm just not that clever. I'm not very good at Latin. So I do it really, really simply. This is how I do it in my own life. Um, I try and read it, read the Bible. That's familiarization. Then having read the text, I explore it. That's imagination. So familiarization, imagination. Then I pray the text. Okay. So that's where I take it and I turn it into conversation. And finally, I try and enjoy it. That's where it's a celebration of wherever I go with that conversation. Does that make sense? It does. Now, I know there's more resources about this um, in yeah. the tool shed yeah, that's yeah. on the prayer course website. Right. But I think it'd be kind of cool if we just did this right now. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Okay, so why don't we take, let's take the Bible verse we're actually looking at today, which is, give us each day uh, our daily bread, which okay. comes in Luke chapter 11. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to read it. It might seem a little strange, but I'm going to read it two or three times. Okay. And remember, we're not reading for information. We're reading, you know, f for familiarization, first of all. So um, I want you to think what word? jumps out at you. Okay. So here we go. Give us each day our daily bread. Give us each day our daily bread. Give us each day our daily bread. Okay, uh, I, I guess the word that's really jumping out to me is, is daily. Oh, okay. um, I think uh, I'm feeling a little challenged about, you know, what we were talking about earlier about the idea of a daily quiet time and, and the idea that maybe God has something fresh for me every day. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, so, so may, maybe this is the Lord speaking to you about something fresh every day. So let's now move from familiarization to exploration and imagination. Let's, let's think about daily bread, mm. okay? So, um, what, what, what does daily bread make you think about? Uh, bread, like eating. Yeah, okay, so, and it's, it's like a warm, fresh loaf mm. with like the smell, you got the smell of that, that beautiful smell of freshly baked bread, and it's like all white fluffy bread in the middle and a nice thick crust. Okay, okay, you're making me hungry. Well, that's good, because actually, we want the way we engage with the Bible to be like integrated with our actual bodies and our real world. Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. So if this is getting you a bit hungry, that's great. And what I'd suggest is we now turn that into prayer, into a conversation with God. So is this okay? Why, why, why don't you just turn whatever you're thinking and feeling around daily bread into conversation with the Father now? Okay, let's do it. Father, I love the idea of your word being like warm, fresh bread. God, make me hungry for that today. God, I pray that you'd get my spiritual taste buds going. And, and God, I just want to say that I'm sorry for the times that I compromise and that I just sit around eating cold, hard, stale bread. 
Thank you so much for the stuff that you've been saying to me today, even as I just sit here in conversation with Pete. Sorry. I feel, I feel really bad. But I can't, well, I am. I'm interrupting your prayer time. But I just wanted to register something. Just from these seven words that we've been looking at, with this approach, can you see how easily you've just gone into prayer? Mm. It's just easy when the Bible becomes a conversation starter. So keep praying. But I just wanted to pause and just register that easy transition. Yeah. So let's keep praying. Sorry to interrupt. Father, before Pete so rudely interrupted me, <laughs> oh God, thank you for talking to me, God, today, for, for teaching me to recognize your voice. God, I pray this week that you would help me to hear your voice in the people that I meet, in the normal parts of my day, God, and, and just even through your word, God. Lord, teach me to pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend.
heart's always home.